Welcome to another installment of Money You Should Ask. I'm your host, Bob Wheeler. In this episode, we are going to explore, question, examine, converse, dig deep, expose, laugh, and cry about the money beliefs, money blocks, and life challenges of our next guest, Josh Nasser. Turn up the volume, listen, learn, and laugh. I'm actually really excited to have Josh here with me. Josh, welcome. Um, this guy is amazing. He, um, You can catch him on Sons of Anarchy. The reruns. The reruns. And you can catch him on, he hosts What's My Car Worth? Um, my old car, probably nothing. And um, he also is just restarting a series of videos that he used to, I don't know that they had a name, but I know that he was usually on the side of the road or by a freeway in his underwear. I did a bunch of viral videos. Um, I've got like 15 million views where I just basically go out and harass the public. It's kind of like Impractical Jokers. Um, it's the same kind of thing. And those guys are my favorite people in the world. Like, nope, they're like watching their show. God, so I, sometimes watching that show, I get so nervous, though. For the, Yeah, like, that's the point. I, I love the awkward. Uh, I love awkward. So awkward. See this awkward? Watch this. That awkward right there? Yeah. I love it. I'll oh, sit in that all day long. That's so funny. I'm always like, say something. Yeah. No, it's, oh, that. man, those guys are crazy. I love um, awkward. Well, and so you've, like, you you do stand up. We met at the club, at the comedy store. Mm -hmm. um, we actually, I came in at the end. I don't think you were already hosting. I don't know if I was part of that show when you were. So I ran a, a, a show in the belly room, which uh, Mitzi Shore made as a safe place for women, actually. And it's kind of evolved. From and that. she sort of saw you as a safe woman. Be Wait a second. Wait. Um, oh, well, OK. And All then right. the reason that we always got along is because you're not a fucking asshole. Oh. You're a nice, normal person. Whereas at that time in the comedy store, there was a lot of assholes. Right. There were not really honestly not nice humans, which yeah. has now totally changed. And it's amazing. But at the time. So, you know, I was always like, Bob Wheeler's a nice human. Yeah, well, I, I I try to be nice once in a while. You know, it's great. Yeah. Nice people don't have to try. They're just nice. They're just nice. Yeah. I wish I try to be meaner, but it just doesn't. Yeah. Why? Why? Boo, boring. Boo. I know it is. So <laughs> let me. One of the things that I remember that you used to do at the comedy store was um, you had a great deal on frozen meat. Yeah, I used to sell frozen <laughs> meat door to door. And I remember you'd be like, I can't stay long. I got to get my set done because I got to get this meat back to the freezer. Hey, I'm sorry to buy the wholesale steak, seafood, and chicken. Now, do you guys in New York strips, Del Monaco's, Ribeye's, T-Bone, Hangar Patties, and Bob, if I can't pack a freezer, I'm going to give it to you for free. And this is a T-Bone. It's the only bone in the bunch besides one of my pants. Show you what I got. Oh, wow. So I did door-to-door -door <laughs> sales of frozen meat. High impulse buy. Had 22 guys working for me. Houses in the hills. Oh, my God. I remember that. Yep. I just and <laughs> hated my life. <laughs> I just, I just, I love that. You're... So... <laughs> Everybody has that reaction. Right. So I wrote a late night set about selling meat. I didn't know. You know, it's like when you do something in your life and you don't realize that it's insane. Right. Because you're like, that's just me. But I did it. And I didn't. Realize. Now people are like, oh, my God, you do what? I, <laughs> you sell meat? I know. It's always. And I'm not a gigolo. It's just it's the good stuff. It was it's, steaks. And see. And you heard of Omaha steaks? Yeah. It's the same thing as that, except we hustle door to door. It's sort of like Amway of steaks. Uh, yes. And you, you ever seen those guys who hustle and sell speakers out the side of a van? Yeah. You know, like my boss over ordered and gave me two. He was supposed to give me two. He gave me two sets. No, he didn't. You know, no, they it stole them. <laughs> no, no. You got them from a warehouse. Oh, okay. But it was, it, it was literally my, like my boss gave me two sets. He was supposed to just give me two. Right. I have an extra set. No, right. you don't. Right. You oh, brought those so... out, you know, so you, you sold and you did whatever you had to do. You were a street merchant. No, you hustled. You hustled. Yeah, dude. And um, now, did you, like, did you, oh, like, when did you decide you wanted to be a comic and an actor and all that stuff? Did you decide that early on? So, uh, I didn't know what it was, what you're saying, comic mm -hmm. actor. Uh, not to get too deep, uh, my stepfather was a monster. He used to lock me in the basement. Really? Nice. So, yeah. that kind of stuff. So, always wanting attention and validation. Yeah. So, I or would go out. anywhere. Just out. Just, okay, you're being hurtful. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> But no, just wanting attention validation. Yeah. And then I kind of meandered. So like the hit off of selling, it's like I knock at your door. You know, you say no, no, no. And I get the hit of the person end up turning and saying yes, yes, yes. And then I kind of meandered through, you know, my, my mom's a very like kind human. And just like I, I, I gravitated towards stand up and hosting. And then after – so I've been doing stand up 20 years. But after – starting eight years ago, November 16th, something clicked in. And I go, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And now that I wake up every day, a total passion for it. I'm totally in debt on my credit card right now. I'm about 55 grand in debt on my credit card. Okay. And I don't care because right. I'm doing what I want to do. Right. You know, I know this money show, so I'm telling you, like, doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. You're following your passion and you're trusting 
the universe or whatever. It works out. And it's just going to work out. And what are you going to do? I'm not going to pay it back. What are you going to do? Right. right. Exactly. You have to, you owe money. Oh, okay. Great. When? To yeah. now. I'm not paying it. Now, yeah. what are you going to do? No, I, I'd always love that. Uh, what's in your wallet? Yeah, nothing. Debt. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaking it. lots of debt. I got yeah. lots of plastic. Yeah. Um, charge it up. But what, and how do you, and just like what gets you through the day though? Like knowing like, okay, I got this. I got this debt right now, but you know what? Life is good. I'm... I do stand up. I host TV shows. Uh, you get huge chunks of money when you you know you book something. Yeah, I'll, I'll get one show and pay it off literally in a week. It's like nothing. Right. That's just what happens. You yeah. know. So I had a, a nice run for a while, and then I didn't book anything for a little while, which was totally fine because I also was focusing on I want to create and sell TV shows that I'm not even on. Right. You know, person I use an example, uh, Whitney Cummings. I don't know how accurate. But she wrote Two Broke Girls. Right. And from what I understand, she didn't go to set all the time. She was executive producer, writer, creator. Right. So she just gets checks. Yeah. That's it. She doesn't do anything. It's a nice way to go. So passive income. So that's what I want to do. Along with um, stand-up, hosting, and acting, I want to create shows that I'm not even on. Yeah. That's the goal. Well, I think that's the best way. I mean, because the people that come up with the ideas reap the most rewards, even if other people eventually are doing the work. I mean, you think about Does Jerry Bruckheimer... Go or Donald P. Belisario go to NCIS. Do they go to every set, you know, and, and what? No, they no. just get checks for NCIS. Yeah. They probably don't even know what the episode is. I, I <laughs> they would don't even care. That, but they were the ones who came up with it, you know? And they're the ones getting the checks. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this. So, growing up, where did you grow up? You grew up. I grew up in Potomac, Maryland. Uh, it, the show Beverly Hills 90210 was based on my high school. Uh, Darren Starr, the creator of it, went to my high school. Oh, wow. Very, very affluent, very, very, very wealthy, all politicians. Um, and our family was uh, middle class. Right. So even though compared to the rest of the United States, remember, I'm in my own paradigm. We did very well. I was around the super wealthy. So I always felt less than. Right. Even though I had school paid for and all that, I always felt less than. Right. Looking back, I'm like, Jesus, fuck yeah, thanks, mom and dad. Yeah, still pretty good, but at the time, it, at the time, it to- you know, they're, they're going on ski vacations, right. and going on yachts, and flying in private planes. You yeah. know. Well, that's so, no. I to- so I went to a a private college in Memphis, and everybody flew into school on their private jets, and they spent Christmas at the Cayman Islands, and I was go. like. Um, I'm going to Walmart yeah. and then um, I'm going to buy a picture of a faraway place that I'm going to pretend I'm at. <laughs> yeah. And even though you probably, you know, were okay. I fit in and it did okay. Yeah. But it's amazing when you're around. It's just, it's all, um, it really is all how you're raised. Right. You know, it's all perspective. It's all perspective. Yeah. So I'm very grateful for it, but I had a fucking crazy childhood. My stepdad was nuts. Yeah. And now it's just not it used to be my story. Now it's just part of my story. Right. You know, do you, and in all that nuts and craziness and your mom being super sweet, like in terms of money, in terms of life choices, was there a message that was given to you? Or? So uh, a message of lack. So coming from a place of lack, I literally remember and I was so screwed up about money specifically. Like uh, there was a girl I was dating mm-hmm. and she needed to borrow whatever the amount it was. I went to the ATM. Let's say it was $60. And I was like, all right, you owe me sixty one fifty, because of the, the ATM charge. Right. You know? And, and I didn't need to do that. But right. my brain did that. And I, I don't know where that comes from exactly, but it was all about control. But I've always had money issues. Um, I never had debt. My credit was always seven ninety or above. Mm-hmm. You know, I owned everything. Uh, I had money in the bank. Um, and this is the first time in my life that I've had debt. And I don't, I mean, I'm literally gone the other way. Now, I'm still responsible, but I go on the other way where I go, I'm living my life and my passion. Right. You know? So it's it's a big, like, my credit right now is like 690 just because of my debt credit ratio. Right. And I'm not freaking out at all. Yeah. No, that's great because, I mean, look, life is short, right? We never know. Never. We just, we wake up, today's a beautiful day. Uh, hopefully there'll be another one, but we just, we don't know. Mm-hmm. And I think... Yeah, it's interesting. I just spent some time in Africa and I got a Really? Yeah. And I got a real perspective of what am I killing myself for so that I can kill myself? <laughs> it seems sort of unless you're passionately doing what you want, like what's otherwise what's the point? What are, yeah, I don't know if it's Dalai Lama, someone said and you might know this, like we're the only species or we're the only thing we work we sacrifice our health to make money. But then we need that money because we've sacrificed our health right. to get healthy. Something right. along those lines. Yeah. And I think that's so true. And that's what when I was in Africa, I realized how 
happy people were with nothing, like no financial, you know, they don't have material goods, they don't have CD players, they're just excited to have a cell phone, and they're happy, happy, Sorry happy, to interrupt. Happy. You went to Africa, yeah. And what kind of just? I want to. What setting were you in? Like, what was I worked. It like? I was. I was at a. Um, I worked at a rhino and elephant sanctuary, Ooh. so I was like volunteering and working with elephants and rhinos. And then I got to work with the local kids in the community, the tribal kids, and it was really, really cool. Where did you stay at? Um, they had a lodge for. There were twelve volunteers, and they we got up every morning at five thirty and uh-huh. worked our butts off, and then. Uh, so when, was it like high end amenities or oh just, no 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 it was very very low end, it was very low end, but it was amazing and I've always wanted to go and how long did you do that for? Uh, three weeks. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm trying to get to like okay, so wow, that's yeah. I'll hook you up. It's an amazing place. Wow. And no, thank you. It's uh, it's only a 31 hour flight. <laughs> I don't want to do any of that. No 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 no. I don't do any of They've that. They've got great comedy clubs. You can do the uh, no that's the not Zimbabwe true. circuit. They Man, don't no no no. They're, Laugh a minute. Oh, little rhinos and elephants. Are rhinos nice? Um, only if you're not near them. They'll kill you. They will kill them. They're vegetarians, but they'll kill you. So you can't go near them. They'll kill you if yeah. you're near I them. Yeah, I mean, what th- we did was we would climb into this little fenced area and throw a little food, and then they would come to us, and we could oh. pet them and feed them. But if you stepped out of the little fenced-in area we were in, they would um, trample you to death. They trample you. And yeah. then the elephants, did you, were they nice? They were pretty cool, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. And what did you take away from that? I know you said it, but what did you take away? Well, I just took away a, a perspective of, you know, we're pretty lucky um, in this country. We've got a lot going on. And I think what it taught me was it's not all about – I mean, I've known this, but it just keeps reminding me. It's not all about material goods. It's not about having the most money. It's all about, like, enjoying life and, like, following your passion and doing what, like, feels good. Yeah. Without hurting anybody else, right? We don't have to hurt anybody else. We can just live our lives. Yeah, and, and again, not to get too philosophical, blah, blah, blah. It takes more energy to hurt someone than not to. Yeah. It takes more energy. And recently I've noticed I have little, I'm say 90% of the time, like happy, happy, happy. Yeah. Sometimes in the car I get really angry. Yeah. And I've, I've found that it comes from when I feel controlled. Something silly like, Bob's in front of me in his car and he's not going. Right. So you're controlling my destiny. Yeah. I'm like, what? I don't even know, I, you know. But that's, it's, look, LA has an energy. When you're in the car, like as soon as I drive outside of the city limit, I'm like, la, 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 la. The minute I drive back, I'm like, I'm going to kill everybody. Right, there's no reason for that. I it's know. nonsense. Because uh, my mom said this, she got it from somewhere else. Uh, anger and hate are the only dis-ease or disease that infects its own container. Oh, that's probably true. Right? Makes yeah. sense. I'm angry at Bob. Oh, you don't give a shit. You're yeah, driving. I'm driving. You know? I'm, I'm angry. I know, I've gotten better. Like in my neighborhood, I let people in where I used to be like, this is my, I'm, no. now I'm like, okay, I'll let you in. So dumb. God, it's a lot of energy. But that's yeah. LA. We're very. But I do want money. I want a ridiculous amount. How much do you want? I want enough to where I don't have to do anything. 10 million? I, go... I feel like 10 million is just not. Fifty million. Yeah, fifty million is pretty solid. I don't. Okay, your your accountant. Yeah. How much do you need to make? Uh, okay, if you put your money somewhere, what's the average you get on a return? If you put it in like a safe place. Well, if you put it in a safe place, you're going to probably get less than one percent. And what's like moderately safe? Um, I would say mutual funds. That, and what do you get there? And maybe you get between three and five percent. Okay. And then you can start to go into stocks and other riskier stuff, and it starts to go up eight, ten, twelve, fourteen percent. So if you put it in 3% and you have $50 million, you're making what? What, what is that? Uh, 50 million, 5 million? should be what? I don't have my calculator. 2.5 million a hundred... year. No. 10% of 50 million is 5 million, right? Yeah. So 5% is 2.5 million. Mm-hmm. So we live on $2 million a year. Not bad. Not <laughs> you got to get 50 million. Yeah, exactly. That's all you have to do. You know? Yeah, I had a client once who said, I have this great idea. I'm going to buy a house um, so I can get all the write-offs, and it'll appreciate in value. And I was like, cool. How are you going to buy for it? And she goes, well, I'm going to have to borrow money from friends so I can get the house. I don't have anything, but it's a really good idea. I'm like, yeah, it's a great idea, but you you got to have the house for it to be a great idea. 100%. <laughs> and there's a lot of ways to make money now. There's a lot of ways. Like my one friend, and I'm going to do it, he bought a car. We live in Southern California. He bought a convertible Mustang, and he rents it out. He makes a grand a month. He rents it out on Turo. Um, he rents it out. So he bought a car, doesn't use it. He has his own insurance for it. But what Turo does is, let's say I rent the car for $100 a day. Turo 
will take 25% and they give you full coverage bumper to bumper. So he rents it out. Let's say he runs it up for 100. He only gets 75, right? Now, when somebody's not driving the car, he has his own insurance that covers it, right? right? But he just rents it out. And so who, where does the car sit? Oh, uh, I think he has two spaces at his place. Um, so if you think about it, you know, you, you, let's say, let's say you get uh, $60 for a rental, which is not bad for a convertible. You can get right. $60 Southern California. And let's say, uh, it's $20,000 for the car. Your payments are $400 a month. Your insurance is 150. There's, you know, uh, 550. You only got to rent it 10 days out of the month right. to get that money. Let's just say 11, whatever, 12. Right, right. Anything else is just profit on it's there. It's gravy. And yeah. And then when you start to get into the summer months, you can charge $70, $80 for it. And that's so, just because people don't want to own a car or it's just no, no, for no, tourists? That, no, that's for tourists because if you think about it, you come in town. If you want to get a convertible Mustang, yeah. you're paying – you know, you go to Enterprise, you're paying a lot of money. Ah, uh, okay. That's the point. I apologize. Yeah. So, so it's sort of like Airbnb for cars. It's, what, it's exactly like that. Okay. Now I got it. So yeah. So I apologize. Yeah. So a lot of people are doing that. Also too, if you know, if, let's say you have a car and you just – you know, you're like, I'm, I'm moving to New York. I got to rent my car for a while. Or – you're traveling and you need someone's car. You don't go to the rental car place. Got it. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of tricky ways. Airbnb, you can do it. I mean, you can make ridiculous money Airbnb. Oh, that's cool. Think about it. You could probably make 100 grand a year just renting out places. Wow, nice. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Let's do it. Sorry, I get excited about money. No, money's cool. Well, let me ask you this. Talking about money, what was your first money experience as a kid? Do you remember, like, a good or... or or a bad experience. First. Uh, no, I remember this. It's kind of a cute story. So do you remember those things that you would get in the mail that says, uh, you know, here's six names. You could be one of six people to win oh, right, right, $10 right. million, dollars, whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mind turned that into I am one of six people. Maybe I don't know how they worded it. Right. So I really thought that I was going to win oh, $10 million. And, and you had to like buy a magazine or do something. And I made my mom fill it out with me. Um, so I remember that. And I've, I've never had a good relationship with money. I don't know quite where that comes from. I know it's from my, my dad did very well when you're younger, when we were younger, mm -hmm. my parents were divorced mm -hmm. very well. And his, his, you know, his second family, you know, he went, had guns and roses, front row seat, Michael Jackson, front we'd ski vacations. So even though we were taken care of, it was always the dad was the one with the money. Right. And we always felt less than. Right. So, uh, that was one experience. And then also even younger, I think, uh, to answer your question more accurately, uh, I had monopoly money. Oh, nice. But I thought it, it was real. So I hid it in my closet and I was like, I'm rich. You're rich. Yeah, I thought it was, that was. Wouldn't that be cool if you could just go buy a Monopoly board game and yeah. get five bucks and then you have like a million dollars? Yeah. It's. I got a question. Yeah. Here we go. You find $50,000 counterfeit money. You realize, you know what? 99.9% .9 nobody's going to tell if you just take it to certain places. Mm -hmm. Would you use it? I might. Yeah. <laughs> I just might. I would. Look, I will. All right. I'll confess. Um, I one time went. So somebody gave me back some money and they gave me a counterfeit $20 bill. How'd you know? I didn't. Well, because then I went to the grocery store and they go, oh, we can't take this. This is a this is a fake. Uh -huh. I'm going to have to keep it. I grabbed it. <laughs> Yeah, I took it from her, and I went to another store, and I freaking put it in with a bunch of twenties because I was like, I was so broke at the time. Yeah, I couldn't afford to be yeah. generous and go, yeah. no, not on. Well, my... they would have taken it. Yeah, they were going to take. That's what they do. They she was going to take it. She was going to take, take it. and I just grabbed it and ran out of the store. <laughs> so you grab money. That's amazing. I wish somebody just saw you grab money. Yeah, he just stole the money. But I yeah. was like really, really broke. I was really. I mean, somebody gives you a billion dollars, but someone somewhere in the world dies. Would you take it? No, nah, I don't think I would do. That. I would. Yeah. <laughs> Bad? Sorry? Did I, was I honest? There was a movie about that. Yeah, something like I've seen the that. The button yeah. or the yeah. box or something. Yeah, yeah, the box. Was that what yeah, it was? Yeah, I remember, the, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, don't push it. It's not worth it. You know. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that was, well, let me ask you this. What was the first, um, first real paycheck you remember getting uh, doing something you love, like in acting or comedy? I think it was really cool being on Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Because I jumped on that show season six, and mm -hmm. they were already a rolling train of success. Yeah. They were already famous. So to be on set, and I mean, all the catering was beautiful. And if yeah. you were there for more than certain hours, a, a coffee truck pulled up. And then you get residual checks. Yeah. And it was really exciting to be around. And these were like big actors, Katie Seagal, Jimmy Smits. They were accomplished. Yeah. I mean, they were there. They still are huge. Right. So being around that and being in scenes with them and hanging out and talking about cars with Jimmy Smith's was like, so that was really like, wow, this is like a big deal. 
Yeah. And I've had shows before that, but this is the first one I'm like, oh, these are A-list people. Right. I'm in a good show. I'm in a, Jesus Christ, people were like saying things and I'm like, I don't know, I have fucking three lines. Like, here's your paperwork, Gemma. You know what I mean? They yeah. weren't huge, you know. Right. But it was fun. So that was like a really, I mean, I'm sure there was other ones, but that's the first thing that came up. Do you, let me ask you this. So did they spoil you like on the set? Did you have your own trailer or did you? No, I mean, my part was not huge, but let me, yeah, I was spoiled, but they didn't spoil me. They just spoil people that they are just on spoil- the set. Well, yeah. yeah, you had your own little trailer, and then the food there. The sh- I mean, it was you walk up, and there's eggs and bacon and this, yeah. and then lunch was steak. I mean, it was it's amazing. Well, it's I remember my one of my very first commercials. Um, I was the comedic relief. I had to run around. It was for uh, Suit Max, and um, and I walked in, and they had they already knew my pick. They, there were only two of us that were the. I walk in there like, oh Bob Wheeler, oh come right this way, right, and then Bob Wheeler, love and it. I was like. Oh my God. And then, you know, they were making me an omelet and then it didn't have enough yolk. And so then they redid something. And then, um, the, I wanted to go to the bathroom and the guy, I was like, can you just like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. You go do your thing. He almost got fired because he didn't stand by the door for me. And I thought I could get spoiled really quick. I mean, if you, if you're a big celebrity, that's your new norm. Yeah. That's your normal for That's the rest it. of your life. For the rest, they I had, can't wait for that. They had fans on me because oh, we were in the green, yeah. and uh, we were in green screen. I was riding this uh, forklift, and like, people are giving me water. And do I'm you like, still do uh, commercials? Because you have a good face for that. I remember you did yeah. a bunch of. You had I'd, a role. I, you know, I haven't. I just, I actually just dropped my, you know, dropped my agent because I was like, I you want me to get you one? No, I just no because going out for commercials, you just don't make enough. I make more money in my office. Oh. You know what I mean? I can make. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, uh, it's not worth the time driving. It's just not yeah. worth the time. Cause they're always in North Hollywood and I'm in Santa Monica. So, um, I would like to get a theatrical cause that's, um, I mean, I just, commercials just don't pay like they used to, but even man, if you I, book a big commercial, they don't, they, they're no, they try to do animation. They try to, most of them, they try to go to non-union. Yeah. I noticed that non-union, they give you a buyout and then they run it. Like my one buddy was on a five hour energy commercial years a yeah. guy named Bart Baggett was on. I see him all the time. It's like, this is amazing. He's like, yo, dude, I got like, I don't know, it's a couple grand, 500, yeah. something. And they play it hundreds of millions of times. Yeah, I did the California um, Don't Trash California campaign for like five years. I think I made 5,000 bucks over the five years. They still play it, you know, and it's like, eh, yeah. I get nothing. I wonder how they get away with doing non-union. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how they get away with it because you would think the union would be like, nope. But here's the thing. I don't want to be the guys like take my picture down because I'm happy that my picture's up. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. that's like. Well, you also agreed to that contract. Right. So you can't be mad. You I agreed know. to it. That's what they I asked know. you and you could have said no. But I want more. Yeah. But I just wanted the stage time or the screen time. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you. So let me ask you this. Um, do What? No. Yeah. Sorry. I know. I couldn't even think of the question. This is sad. What was the best or worst stand up gig you had? Do you remember like totally bombing in front of a big crowd. Or- yeah. I love it. Dude, love it's it. my favorite thing. When you bomb, I love telling the uh, like you, I say cunt. I get oh, cunts. I love it. And you there turn was, on the audience. There was a lady. I did a show uh, at one of the levity clubs. And this lady was, I don't know if she was drunk or whatever, but she was like, so everybody's sitting down and she's like standing up. Oh, that's funny. Oh yeah. That's funny. Oh yeah. I mean, just kept screaming. That's hilarious. And, I'm trying to tape a set for late night and the host go, Hey guys, so listen, don't be too loud. You know, he's trying to film a set for late night. You can obviously be loud, but don't, you know, be screaming on the first second out. She's like, yeah. And I go, I literally <laughs> said this. So everybody's laughing at my first punch. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, yeah. And I go turn, I go, shut the fuck up. I go, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why the fuck? He just, I mean, I said it like that. There was no, and it was so awkward. I go, I don't give a fuck. And I go, see this awkwardness. This was my childhood. I can live in this. And I got a little laugh. And I got him back. But so I've done that on more than one occasion, oh, wow. which is not good. But at a, you know what this would say? Percentage wise, mathematically, I've done it. Let's say 1,000 shows. Let's say you've done 950 were, or 975 were just amazing. Yeah. Awesome people. Yeah. Well, I think most people want to come out and laugh. And as long as they don't have to take care of the comic, you know, like, please, please laugh at me. I'm the, then people will have a good time. But I, have a, I lose it. I'll stop the show. And I'll make it awkward. I go, what the fuck is wrong with you? 
What happened in your life that you need to? And they go, you like it. I go, no, you don't. No, I don't. No one ever likes it. Comics, we never want to hear your voice. Right. And I go, shut the fuck up. I love when people are like, I'm just helping the show. No, you're not. I'm helping you. I didn't ask for your help. (laughs) I'm going to make you funnier. (laughs) Just so you guys know, by the way, uh, I'm I'm looking at this. This guy's delicious hair. There's a a tech back there and he's got beautiful hair. Well, I don't have hair, so I have hair. I mean, look how delicious his hair is. Yeah. I, I never think of hair as delicious. I just... I mean, I'm lacking. I, I come... use Propecia and Rogaine. Yeah, but never worked for me. All right. I got I got called in for an audition to a hair place. Like and hair really, for men? No, for um, for hair transplants. Yeah. And literally, everybody that they called in, they came back and said, well, we didn't use you, but um, we'll give you 50% off you if you want to get um, the surgery. I'm like, that's, that's sales. totally sales. So oh, they bring in all it. these actors. Probably 25% of them signed up and got the hair job. I love it. Isn't that funny? Oh, my God. So let me. So what? What would you tell me is your biggest money block or your biggest belief around money? Um, you said you had a bad relationship with it. You like money. Like, what's your philosophy if you summed it up on money? My philosophy is, I I was never taught a proper relationship with money. So, and it's not because I'm dumb. I'm not. I wasn't educated about the proper relationship with money. Yeah. So. Right now where I'm at, I need help. You know, I know they have Debtors Anonymous. They have Mm -hmm. these places. I don't know how to pay myself first, you know, not not use that money or to use that money. How much are you supposed to have? I just don't know that information. What I'm banking on, God willing, is that I'll book big things where I'll make a ridiculous amount and then that won't, you know, that and I'll, you know, get financial advisors. I'll come to people like you, you know, you're not going to screw me over and be like, what do I do? Right. You know? Uh, my brother's really good at that. So I, I, I guess my philosophy is I don't know enough to know. Yeah. I don't know how to do it. I know I've always taken care of myself since I was 18. You know, no, that's cool. You know, the door to door sales of meat I would make, you know, I go out and then think I'd sometimes go out and make five, 10, 20 grand in a day selling meat. Yeah. Jesus. I'd make that much in a day. Wow. And I was still in lack right. in my brain. Yeah. So I can tell you, I'm not good at that. So if you could go back in time. Knowing what you know now, what would you tell that 18-year-old version of yourself? Learn. Learn? Yeah. I, uh, uh, find a financial person and have them set up whatever it would be to set up, whether it automatically comes out, whatever. Let me just te- Teach me whatever I don't know. Right. That's what it would be. I don't know what it is. But I also was the guy who lost 60 grand in an hour gambling at, in Vegas. Wow. You know, just went and just gambled. But, ah, whatever. I went to the safety deposit box, paid 28000 of it, paid that off, and then I just worked for a year, made it all back. I'm like, all right. Oh, man. So. what were you, And were you doing slots? Were you blackjack. doing blackjack? Blackjack. Yeah, five grand a hand. Wow. Yeah. So I got a problem. That's. Do you gamble a lot now? No, I never do. I oh, never. That... I was just like once, twice I did that. I lost like nine grand once. Then I, if I go now, I play $5 hands and I always win because I just keep doubling the money. Wow. Double, 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 lose, double, 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 win, double. And I just, you know, I play, I make $32 and I'm excited. Wow. I see. I don't, I, I did gamble for a little bit, but then I try to take my winnings and I put it in my pocket and only play with the $5 yeah. that I started with. I'm super, cause I, are you I, good at it that I'm, I'm, I've been pretty good on slots, picking certain, like, uh, the 50 cent slots. No, what I mean is, are you good at not going into your pocket? Yeah. Good for you. Most of the time. But now I don't even like to do that because I don't even want to lose the 100 bucks or the 50 bucks. I, I'll i be gambling five, $5 tables, and I have full anxiety. I'm sweating. Cause it's oh, not my out. God. No, no. That's, oh, my God. I'm going to win. I'm going to lose. $5, $5, $10 counting oh my, my chips. Jeez. Yeah. No, I don't even want to put a penny in. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to give it up. I do. I don't want to give it up. Well, let me ask you this. We're coming to the end, so I really appreciate you coming out here. Where can people find you? At Josh Nasser, J-O-S-H-N-A. Single S A R. That's Josh Nasser across any and all platforms. If you type it in, everything that I'm doing will come up. Well, that is cool, and we're going to, of course, promote the heck out of you. Um, just to remind you, you can share the laughs and find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcast, Google Play, and Stitcher. Um, you're watching. Money You Should Ask. I'm your host, Bob Wheeler. Are they watching it? They are watching it. Oh, they're not watching it. I always say that. I always lie. I can't live like this. I know. Okay. You know, for the people that are, what should I say? You're listening. Listening. You've just listened to. You just listened. And I said, see. You just listened Mm -hmm. to what? What's the name of it? Money You Should Ask. 
you've just seen it, heard it, heard it. Heard. <laughs> I have a, I have a face for audio. That's that's all I know. Um, it's been beautiful. Thanks for coming on. Bye. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you.